since his extended layoff. Garcia says he's on the fast track to reclaiming his spot on that pound for pound list while taking big fights against the most dangerous fighters to establish his own boxing legacy. He was a king to me. He's considered the most feared man at 135 pounds. They don't want to fight him because of his power in many cases, but when he gets big fights, he gets the job done. Al with 45 seconds left in the third round. One of the, the oh, no, 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 Hey, you rocking live with the Pod Swim Radio podcast. We got a very special guest today, one of the top-ranked boxers in the world, the number one 135-pounder in the world. We got Mikey Garcia today. How you doing today, Mikey? Hello. Thanks for, for having me. I'm doing good, man. Pretty pretty excited, you know. Uh, pretty good things coming up and uh, just, you know, doing doing some good things around the community in, in the past few days. So I feel I'm feeling good. Yeah, no, nah, man, it's good. How's the Final Four experience, man? Uh, it's a whole different thing, man. I, I love it. It's the uh, first time, but uh, it's, it's really great. That's dope. Okay, so we definitely want to thank you for sitting down with us today. Yeah, for sure, man. Awesome. All right, so what we want to talk about, we, we're big boxing fans down here in Phoenix, Arizona. Obviously, everybody knows the uh, West Coast is real. West Coast, West Side is real big on boxing. So we just asked some questions that some people wanted to ask, us, ask you today. So we wanted to ask about, obviously, you fresh off a of knockout. You knocked out, uh, what, Dijon? I don't know how to say his last name. His ladder Canyon. You want to talk to us about that fight? That, that's close enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, no, it, I think it was a, a good performance. You know, we had a, the right game plan. We uh, were in, in great shape and... Uh, the game plan was obviously, as you could see, to use my left hand to dictate the uh, distance and pace of the fight. Um, we knew he was a very dangerous opponent, very strong opponent. If you stay and trade punches with him in close quarters or if you let him corner him to, to the ropes and stuff. So we wanted to circle around like I did for the for the three rounds. And um, I happened to land a good uppercut, you know, followed by a right hand that put him down and you know, it would end of the fight. But um, I, I I felt like it was a very good performance, you know? No, absolutely, absolutely. So would you say that you kind of solidified yourself as the top 130? I mean, you've been ranked the top 30, 135 pounder for a while. Do you feel like that, or do you feel like you have more that you have to accomplish? No, I, I think there's there's other champions who are, are also, you know, very good champions, and uh, most recently... Linares had a great performance, so you know I think I think a uh, fight between me and him would definitely um, you know decide who the the main you know the the top dog at 135 really Absolutely. is. Uh, I believe I am. I'm sure he believes he is. So it would, the only way to find out is if we both get in the ring together. Yes, sir. So now we've been hearing rumblings about the George Linares fight. What do you think of the chances of that uh, actually coming to fruition? Well, I think it's actually a pretty good chances. Um, you know, he just won his last fight. He wasn't cut. He wasn't injured. So he should be ready to go. And uh, WBC is ordering that we fight each other. I'm waiting to hear from the WBC what that uh, time frame may be. Uh, normally they give a certain time frame to uh, start negotiations between both parties. And yes. if, you know, if if it still isn't possible, then what they do is they will force him to take a purse bid. And if he decides not to do that, then they will strip him from the title. But um, oh. you know, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the time frame is yet. So I'm, I'm waiting for WBC to give those to those orders. Gotcha. All right. And then we got another champ in the 135 division, Robert Easter. What, what's the chances of a Robert Easter Jr., Mikey, or let's say Mikey Garcia, Robert Easter Jr. fight? I think I think that's actually also a very good fight. Um, the only thing that 
he's he's also a new champion, not as known yet. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe a fighter too, you know, under his belt that 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 really, you know, makes him stand out. Because um, he definitely has the skills to to prove it. You know, he needs the right opponent to to show it. Um, but uh, maybe maybe a fighter too, like I said, so that the network and then the main you know boxing community sees him and knows who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's still a, l- a little bit of, of, of a new champion, uh, unknown. But um, just a fighter, too, you know, a good, a good performance will, will be enough to, to really make him stand out. Absolutely. Agreed, agreed. All right, so uh, you, I would say, or I'd say you're a boxer who comes forward a lot, you know what I mean? So we see a lot of action in your fight. Would you agree that you're more of an offensive fighter? Uh, it just depends on my opponent. I kind of uh, adjust and... Um, make the uh, game plan according to my opponent. What what's necessary, what's needed for me to win. If if it requires me to be offensive, then I will be offensive. If the fight requires me to be uh, more of a defensive, you know, mentality, then I will be more defensive and, and try to counter. It all just depends on on how my opponent is coming. That will uh, make me work, you know, in, in a different manner. Absolutely. What do you say to the critics like the, uh, you know, Roy Jones, Max Keller, Max Kellerman, who say Mikey, you know, ha- hasn't been tested, you know? Well, um, you know, I I honestly kind of agree with some of that, you know, to to a degree. I haven't been um, pushed, not necessarily tested, but pushed to 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 really show you everything I have. Fighters that have, were supposed to push me and, and put me in that difficult situation, you know, have turned out to be easy fights. I made it easy. You know, we fought hey, that's the right team. Hey, to make it look easy, brother. Well, my my job is to make it as easy as possible for me. Uh-huh. You know, and and uh, some some of the of the fighters that I faced that are tough, rugged opponents, you know, make other fighters, you know look bad, but I happen to make it look easy because I have the right game plan, you know, but it, it might be someone else that, you know, makes it more difficult for me and, and where I need to really dig deep to, to get that, you know, extra, you know, to, to win the fight. Yeah, well, coming from my uh, Possum Radio podcast, man, we we say you the man, all right, so. <laughs> well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, no, Absolutely. All right, no, so, so let's say how much would you say of your uh, skills? Because, you know, a lot, a lot of people are talented, but a lot of people don't have skills. You know, you got to hone in in order to have a skill. How much of your skills would you say relate to your brother, Robert Garcia, or, or your father as far as training? Well, you know what? I, um, some some skills are naturally, you know, given. You know, you, you're born with some of the skills, but um, if, if you really – look at, at, at the way I fight, um, you're not going to see any flashy footwork or, or super fast hands or, or crazy head movement and, and stuff like that. But it, it's it's just proper technique and proper timing, um, the correct, you know, distance. You know, I, I, I can judge the distance between me and my opponent to where I'm safe or, or away from danger, and I can judge the distance to when to attack, you know, great timing like that. Um, that's that's my my training, you know. That's that's my dad and my brother as my trainers who have taught me like that since I was a kid, and I've, I've picked that up a lot. And I, although it may not seem like I'm, you know, a defensive, you know, oriented fighter, but I actually do, you know, uh, worry and, and take care of, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm very defensive also. Um, I try not to get hit, you know. Um, if you look at my fights, I'm always, you know, actually trying to you know, avoid punches by by blocking or or just stepping, uh, you know, slightly to the side or back to to avoid a punch. So it, there is defense in there, and um, you know, it, it's the right game plan, you know, right strategy, the correct strategy, you know, for every opponent. That's part of my dad and my brother's job. Um, no. And I, I'm also pretty smart in the ring. You know, I, I make certain adjustments if I need, if I feel that I need to do them in, in between rounds, I can also make the adjustments. So it's a combination of a lot of things, my brother, my dad, with their experience, and myself as well. No, I, I think that's awesome, man. I think they're some of the best game planners that I've seen because, um, 
honestly, one of my uh, favorite fighters who ended up becoming one of my favorite fighters after the Broner fight, because I like Broner a lot also, but was Maidana. You were sparring with Maidana, right? Was it before that fight? I was sparring Maidana after the Broner fight when, when he started, when he fought the uh, Mayweather fight. I was helping uh, Maidana for for those fights, especially for the uh, second fight for the rematch. Man, talk to us about Maidana, man. He just seemed like, because we do comedy on here a little bit, he seemed like a dude who just really don't give a, a shit about anything. Yeah, well, you know what? He's very cool, very cool and humble guy. Uh, but inside of the ring, you know, he, he he's deadly. You know, he always came with with his bad intentions. And uh, he was very strong. You know, he, he was strong and, and uh, threw, you know, punches from, from different angles that you're normally not used to. And that made it, you know, more difficult to, to time him and to, you know, really, you know, watch the punches and combinations that he's going to throw because he just kind of never knew what was coming. But, um, you know, he, he definitely had, you know, heart and, and power in, in his in his fighting. Absolutely. You know, those angles, that's, that's how, that's what he caught. What he catch running with an overhand, right? It was, it was from a, the awkward ass angle, man. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Well, while, while we talking about Madonna and uh, your uh, brother, you know, <laughs> boxers in Oxnard, you got any other boxers in Oxnard just coming up that people need to know about? Well, my brother has a few fighters, um, not necessarily from Oxnard, but, you know, training with my brother now. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are a couple of fighters out of Texas: Hector Tanahara, uh, Josh Franco. Um, you got Bam Rodriguez, and then LA fighter uh, Jonathan Navarro. So these are all up-and-coming kids, you know, like five, six, eight, and zero kids um, who, who my brother is is uh, developing, and all of them have great skills and and uh, are, are showing to be you know very good prospects. Gotcha. Anybody, you got any of them fighting under? It's Mikey Garcia Promotions, correct? Well, right now they they are actually all these kids are have been signed to uh, Golden Boy Promotions, and uh, Bam Rodriguez was signed to Taken Promotions. Um, they they've been they turned pro. I think it was two years ago now. So they they're under contract with Golden Boy, and and my brother is is working with them as a manager and trainer. Um, but um, you know maybe later in the future I can. Maybe entice them to come over and, and fight on, on my undercards. <laughs> yeah, now you on the way, man. You on the way. So, how, how refreshing is it, you know, being your own boss after everything you went through with the uh, top rank lawsuit or HBO, or whatever? I don't fact check on my radio station. I'm gonna let you know that. But you know, <laughs> whatever you went through, it was it was, uh, it was you know, two and a half years with uh, with my former promoter. You know, we had a you know a dispute, the litigation, different uh, point of view, and my understanding of my contract so situation was different than what he believed, and we went uh, you know 12 rounds in court until they finally threw in the towel at the last minute. They they decided to uh, call it quits, but um, it was it was a long experience. But now I'm I'm in a different place. I'm very happy to be where I'm at. I'm Bless. in control. I I dictate you know all the terms, and I'm still willing to work with, with, with other promoters. I have been, you know, uh, keeping relationships with some of these promoters, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to work even with, with top rank if it, if it means, you know, a fair fight or, you know, a fair deal for both fighters. Um, you know, we can always sit down and discuss anything. It just has to be a fair deal. None of these, you know, extension, you know, BS, you know, no, none of that. We want to make sure that it's a, the right deal for me. Absolutely. Yeah, we heard Floyd Mayweather taking a jet out to Oxnard every other Thursday to come see you. Did you get to spar with Floyd? No, I, I, he came down uh, on two separate occasions to the gym. Um, and, you know, it's kind of playing around. You know, I asked him to get in the ring with me because I, I, had just, I was just about to get ready to spar. So mm-hmm. when he came down like, like a year ago, he, he wanted to see me work out and then it happened to be sparring day so it was um, just kind of playing around I told me you know to get in the ring and you know he said no of course you know he obviously was not there for that um you know so we we never got to spar but uh, I mean I would definitely love an opportunity you know just to you know share the ring with with, with him would be, yeah. would be great 
you might get them nowadays, honestly. In, in 2017, you 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 might you might pull that off. Well, if if he uh, needs a fight, you know, and, and after a couple other victories on my end, we might be able to uh, entice him to get back and and get out of retirement, <laughs> or at least at least maybe help him spar for for one of his fights if he decides to fight back. Yeah, because he paying motherfuckers for anything. All right, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> another uh, exploit opponent. We hear you could possibly fight Pacquiao also, the senator. Well, I don't know how likely that is, but, I mean, that's a fight that would definitely interest me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and if they're still looking for opponents, you know, they're having trouble finding marquee names. Well, you know, if they haven't forgot my number, they still have it. They haven't lost it. They could always ring me up. Yeah. Um, you know, I would definitely be interested in a fight with him. I don't know if that's actually in, in, in the company's uh, plans or they even thought about it. I don't know if Manny or his team have even thought about me. But uh, whenever anybody asks me, you know, of course, that's that's an interesting fight that I would definitely consider and take in. And I really wish it could happen. Absolutely. All right. So another thing I was looking at, man, because obviously we, I'm in Arizona, you know, so we right next to California. Three of your last, you I mean you had six fights in 2013. Three of them have been in New York, man. Are you trying to leave us? Are you trying to head to the East Coast, or do you just get a lot of love and support out there? See, the thing is that I wasn't in, in control back in the day, so I had a lot of fights in in uh, New York, uh, Texas. You know, I fought fight in, in other states, but uh, it wasn't my my call. But now that it it, it is. You know, I had uh, a fight in Vegas because it was a good opportunity to me to be back, you know, closer to home. So I took that opportunity to be, you know, fighting in Vegas on a great card. And uh, my next fight, I'm uh, I'm pushing. I'm, I'm I'm speaking to the right people so that we can get the the fight in in Southern California. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to do something for for my local fan. They haven't seen me in LA since I think like 2011. So mm-hmm. I I want to do something for them, but um, after that, then uh, I mean I know we got a lot of fans here in, in Arizona too. So we're coming down here. My brother used to fight here. He fought a couple times in Arizona. So I was, yeah. uh, I fought here, you know, I think a, a pair of times earlier in my career. So maybe now that I'm champion, I can come back to to Arizona also. Okay, yeah, man, I want to come check out the gym in Oxnard, man. I see Ellie Sec back there. I love fucking Ellie Sec Sec back. I've been watching him since he was a. Uh, Chasing Kobe Bryant around back in uh, 2005. <laughs> oh, Only nice. 25. Yeah, no, I I like yeah, but he's, yeah. he's dope, man. Yeah. I like Yeah, for sure. All right, so before I let you go, man, I wanted to uh, just get you to man, touch on, like, let's say you got a kid who wants to get in the box, and just talk about, like, uh, like the long-term health risk or anything like that, you know, upside and downside of boxing. Well, I, I suggest, you know, for, for a young kid, you know, eight, ten, twelve year old kid, you know, wants to do some boxing, um, go to the gym. Obviously, you know, you have to like what you're doing, you have to love the sport. Um, but you also don't wanna as a parent you don't wanna burn them out because, you know, they're still kids. They gotta be able to enjoy being kids. And sometimes I've seen with other parents that they push the kids just too much and um they don't have time to really be young and, and, and be a kid and by the time they're 17, 18, 19, you know, they're, they're burned out. They're, they're tired. They're, they're, they don't want to do it. Um, so if, if if you see that your son or, or, you know, young boy wants to do some boxing, you know, take him to the gym. But every once in a while, give him some time off also, you know, rest him, give him, give him a break, let him enjoy being a kid, he's playing with, with his other, other friends, riding bikes, you know, taking – taking days off because it's very important. You got to enjoy what you're doing. And if once it starts getting, you know, like, like tiring and boring and being a job, it's, it's not a good recipe. It doesn't, it doesn't go well. But as a kid, you always got to try to learn, learn, learn as much as you can. Um, you never stop learning. You know, I, I'm still learning. There's still things to learn. So never think you know it all, you know, and, and practice a lot of practice, you know, learn new things every day. So, that's kind of what I think is is uh, most important for for someone who's starting to to like boxing and want to do boxing. Absolutely, thank you for that, man. You're very well spoken, man. We were definitely 
want to thank you for having you on. Now, just, uh, before I let you go, I do do this podcast with my family, so I was hoping we could just get a quick shout-out for family first. Of course, man. Well, love and appreciate all the support. Uh, thank you for, for having me. Family first. Uh, thanks very much for the uh, the support that you guys show me, and uh, you know we'll be back. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, thank you, man. We look forward, and we definitely glad to hang. I'm going to have to meet you. You know, we'll get up together, but uh, we want to thank you again for having you. We got a world champion, three division world champion boxer, 36 and 0, pound for pound range, Mikey Garcia, man. Appreciate you. Salute. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you.